Hey guys, it's Mike here with Quick Thought. First off, I want to thank all the new subscribers that subscribe to the channel and who tuned in to the previous video. The reason I started this channel is because I knew that a lot of Team Greeners just needed a place to go, as here on YouTube is just overly saturated by Team Black Apologists. This is going to be a channel definitely for Team Green enthusiasts, as there are just so many other channels for Team Black Apologists out there. So. If you're really looking for someone who's just going to ride for Team Black, you're probably in the wrong channel, but have no fear, because a Team Black channel is always near. Well, yeah, I know that was pretty lame, but you guys get the point. <laughs> this probably isn't going to be a place for Team Black enthusiasts. However, of course, I welcome everyone to the channel, and I think we should just all dive and discuss this awesome world that George R. R. Martin has created. But without further ado, let's go ahead and discuss this badass episode. So this episode opens up with Vaymon Velaryon, Corliss's younger brother, giving the ceremonial speech at Lena's funeral. Now he's speaking high Valerian, so not everyone there can understand him, I'm sure, but enough people can, including Damon, who gives him a nice little shady smirk, like, dude, fuck you. You're not going to be shading my niece's bastards at my late wife's funeral. Granted, I think Vaymon's timing was misplaced, as I don't think Lena's funeral is the timing to be salty towards your would-be nephews. However, his message is pretty damn valid. Legitimate blood rights is nothing new to the Targaryens, the Valarians, or the whole of Westeros. So don't hate the player, hate the game. And then we come to a very lackluster conversation between the sons of Valon Targaryen. Yeah, I don't like, well, I don't care for either of the sons of Valon Targaryen. In fact, I don't really care for any Targaryen who's been named Viserys. Just a quick thought. But you can definitely tell here, Viserys is definitely in a time in his life to where he just wants family around. He's just so sick that nothing else is really important, right? When your health is failing, the most important thing is, you know, recouping your health and getting better. Health is literally wealth, and we even see that with the king. Alright, I may have to take a quick breath before I get on this deviant. This is one of the sole reasons why I do not like Rhaenyra Targaryen. It's like she's touched in the head or something, because she just doesn't learn. She goes and does her favorite thing, commits yet another act of adultery, yet this time with her uncle Damon. Hey, and listen, we can't even be mad at Damon because whether you like it or not, Lena just passed. So Damon can technically do whatever he wants. But Rhaenyra, on the other hand, is still legally married, and she commits yet another act of adultery, which is the same reason why the realm is in a frenzy over her illegitimate kids. You can definitely say or make the argument is that, oh, her husband's gay, but I can definitely make the argument is that, no, she didn't take the opportunity that her dad, the king, gave her to choose her own husband, <laughs> right? Like, how many ladies of the realm actually get the opportunity to choose who they want to marry? Not freaking many, and she threw it away, right? So she got stuck with Laner. But Viserys definitely holds some of the responsibility for this behavior of Rhaenyra. He definitely aided this behavior all the while being a shitty father to the rest of his kids. And speaking of his kids, argumentatively, the coolest of them all, Aemon Targaryen. So minus the shitty lighting in this scene, I really enjoyed it, like a lot. Seeing Aemon claim Fagar, the longest living and largest dragon in the world, previous dragon of Visenya and Balon Targaryen, like she's just, she's hands down, Vagar is my favorite dragon. There's not even a competition. Uh, but I definitely think this mounting a dragon and bonding with a dragon was definitely how we should have seen Game of Thrones did it with Jon, right? Um, definitely think this was more so what we were looking for. Yeah, it was flipping awesome. So, sorry, Reyna. <laughs> you snooze, you lose, right? So in this next scene, like, we gotta be real here. <laughs> Aemon did come in with a different aura about him, right? Like someone said, he came in like he lost his virginity. <laughs> no doubt about that. But I think it's important to note that uh, they, the kids did attack him first. It was four against one. No one looks at Aemon's side to see if he was terrified, especially when all the kids were on him. Like, let's look at how we would react it, right, if there was four against one. Um, and nonetheless, it is kids being kids. At least it was until, you know, knives and rocks got pulled out. Now, it's important to note that Aemon had plenty of times to literally knock all of them silly with that rock, and he didn't until he felt threatened, right? When Jaceris got sensitive and started swatting knives at him, right? So yeah. So moving on to the scene that possibly ticked me off the most during the entire episode. This scene definitely amplifies and definitely solidifies how much of not only a shitty father, but a weak and unstable King Viserys is. 
But it definitely shows how much of an entitled and manipulative person Rhaenyra is. Just the absolute lack of morals for Viserys to question his son, who just lost an eye while being attacked by four of his family members, just shows the absolute disdain or lack of care that he has for his offsprings with Allison. All the while favoring the daughter who insists on running around the realm with teenage behavior, just breaking the rules, doing whatever she wants, and expecting everyone to abide by it, right? The same daughter who was supposedly his political headache. The same daughter who's much like Sarah Targaryen, the daughter of Jaehaerys Targaryen, and the rest of his daughters who gave him a headache, right? And just stressed him out throughout his life. <laughs> and it wasn't like Viserys' kids by Alicent were like Joffrey to where they like mutilated animals and he just couldn't stand to be around him, right? Uh, he was just a shitty father. And and even, um, you know, Patty Considine, the actor for Viserys, states that he just doesn't stand up for his kids. Son's had his eye taken out in a fight with his daughter's children. Again, family stuff, you know. Viserys has a soft spot and an affection for Rhaenyra. And even that affects his marriage, that he doesn't stand up for his own children. For Alison, it's finally boiling over. And after being married to a man, a king rather, who takes away all of your authority, all the while being a shitty father and leaving you with nothing in your control to protect your kids and your family, all the while failing to do so? Yeah, you will lose your shit too and you will be a liar to say you wouldn't. Now, I'm not calling for anyone to take a kid's eye, publicly, but the ruling of which Viserys came to terms with was just completely what Alicent said. It was insufficient. It was completely insufficient. Viserys' face here even says that he knows that he was wrong. He knows that he could have done more. He knows that he did Allison and Aemon and his kids wrong. Like, he knows this. But he's a coward and he's a weak man. So much so that he can't even look his wife in the eyes. And Viserys seems so confused on other punishments that he could give his grandson, Lucerys. Like, there are plenty of things that could have been done. Firstly, possibly more on the extreme route, the Prince Lucerys should have been stripped of all of his titles. Aemon didn't get to keep his eye, so why should Lucerys get to keep his titles? Like, let's be real here. He's a bastard. He's not supposed to inherit either way, so this could have somewhat settled the ground or more so give Viserys the opportunity to actually acknowledge the truth without actually acknowledging it, while also pleasing his wife that at least one of Rhaenyra's illegitimate sons are not in line for the throne, or any title for that matter. Secondly, on the least extreme end of the spectrum, but yet still pretty extreme, the Prince Lucerys could have been sent to a lower house to where he may serve as a ward, much like Theon Greyjoy was sent to Winterfell to serve the Starks. So regardless of what you feel or what you think the punishment should have been for Lucerys, something should have been done. And something more than just telling everyone to sing Kumbaya. The king has to make tough, difficult decisions. That's just the fact of the matter. Otherwise, like Viserys, he will be perceived as weak, incompetent, and vulnerable. So getting to the end of the episode, we see Sir Laner and Rhaenyra talking, and this has to be to where they discuss Laner going away, because we don't really get to see that part of the conversation, as we just more so see her speaking with Damon, and it cuts away to Laner and his lover, right? Um, however, prior, we see Laner kind of come to his senses, or kind of just comes to the realization that, like, hey, he wants to be a better father, he wants to at least, you know, give it another shot, but somewhere in this conversation, they have to agree that, hey, it's not really you, let's not force it, there's no need to, you go live your life, right? Um, and it's very different from the books. Now, you guys tell me what you think about this, because this part is it's definitely spiking my interest, because, like, you know... Um, if you guys don't know, while a rider is still alive, no other person can bond with that dragon. So I don't really know where Laner plans on going with that dragon, or is he leaving it? Doesn't really make sense to leave his dragon in Westeros, and how is he going to take a big dragon to Essos and try to be anonymous, right? Try to be secret, like, is don't really see that happening, so... Yeah, I'm kind of confused on where they're going with that. Definitely a big change from the books. Uh, you guys tell me what you think about this below. Um, but shortly after this, we cut to Sir Laner's lover, Sir Car Cory, and him battling while Damon literally just murders a servant. They throw that guy's body in the fire and pass him as Sir Laner. And the rest is freaking history, right? To make matters even worse and even more sketchy and even more obvious, <laughs> Damon and Rhaenyra, shortly after the supposed death of Laner, they get married. <laughs> uh, keep in mind, a couple hours prior, Laner dies, right? <laughs> so this just makes him more of a target or just like, hey, you guys clearly murdered my kids. 
um, from Corliss and Rainey's perspective, right? So I hope to see if they're going to dive on that at all, because there's like speculations in the book that Damon and Rhaenyra, you know, murdered Lena and Lenor so they could get married. We'll see how they kind of go about that, being that they got married so soon after Lenor's death. We're going to see how Corliss and Rainey takes that. If they touch on that at all, it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, and that's about it, guys. That concludes the episode. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. As I know it's been super delayed as episode 8 comes out here in a couple hours and my mic took longer than expected to come in the mail. But anywho, if you guys don't mind, help me reach my first milestone here on YouTube of a thousand subscribers, which is when I think I'll make my first live appearance here on the channel. Well, that's all I got for you guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys on my next video. Later, and peace out.